G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Um, I've got a very grumpy and hungry cat behind me, so I'll keep this quick. Um, but today I've got a quick video just that I thought I'd share because it's, a, it's an interesting topic. Um, that I run into quite a lot with Dynamo users, uh, where often we overcomplicate our solutions. Um, we make something that's so smart, it's dumb. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna show an example of when I ran into this and the solution I used and why it's a good example that we always need to think about the people that we're building scripts for and the way that they'll find it easiest to use the script and also interact with it. So I'm gonna show you in this case a, a couple of user interface techniques, um, but also just how to sort of unwind a problem um, that you might face. So in this case, I was trying to isolate some roof edges and calculate uh, the linear takeoff of some of those edges. Um, but rather than automatically using the geometry of the roof, I opted out for a much more simple solution um, that led to a better outcome. So in this case, I'll be using Dynamo 2.3, uh, but you can use pretty much any, any version of Dynamo for this example. It mostly just uses edges of a roof. Um, anyway, let's dive in. Okay, so today's video is really focused around um, an example of a script I was trying to develop uh, to show Dynamo to a client a while ago, just to show them how it works from a residential perspective. And having thought about my method, I realized that I wasn't really building the script in a way that just made sense for people to use. Um, in this case, I was trying to calculate essentially the linear takeoff for all the edges of a roof. So in this case, all the ridges, the peaks, and the valleys. Um, you might think it's really easy, but it gets quite challenging because there's so many different types of roofs. Um, so for example, in this case, you know, this is gonna be a valley, but if I go to another type of roof, it, it has no valleys. Um, as, as well as there's sometimes different edges of the roof are considered in terms of how you wanna measure flashing. So it's essentially a way to avoid modeling flashing altogether um, and tallying it and associating the parameters back to the roof by measuring its edges. Um, but there's just so many exceptions to the rules. Um, but I will show you at least sort of the path I was following before I decided to just, you know, do something different. Now you can model things like fascias, um, but usually a lot of people don't want to take the time to model them. It just takes too much time. So um, they don't really actually think it's necessary and they'll just instead sort of estimate or guesstimate uh, the lineal meterage of all the ridges and flashings they need on their roofs. Um, but in this case, I'm gonna add some project parameters. Um, you could make them shared parameters. Um, for now, I'm just gonna make them project-based. And I'm gonna add them to all my roofs. So in this case, I'm just gonna say, in this case, uh, ridges, make it instance-based and also make it uh, length-based. Apply it to roofing. I'm gonna add uh, valleys. So in this case, I'm just adding each category. Um, of flashing type you would need um, in something, say, like a roof tile. Um, so ridges, valleys, and peaks. Um, so sometimes they might use different capping pieces. You could probably call it cappings, maybe, um, for the, the flat running pieces as well, um, or the pieces that might be different to the ridges. Um, so in this case, we've just added some parameters to all the roofs in the model, um, ridges, valleys, and cappings. And the idea is we want to populate this with the actual length of all these elements. Now, obviously, this is going to be very difficult to measure um, in Revit without Dynamo because all these things are on angles and they're quite difficult to, to crunch. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is today I'm just going to run Dynamo and I'm going to work um, ad lib. So I haven't pre-prepared any scripts or anything like that. But I'm just going to show you a couple of examples of some mistakes and steps that I followed before I sort of found this solution that was so dumb, it was smart, <laughs> I guess is how I like to put it. Um, so I sort of was overthinking what the script would need to do. And then I just took a step back and said, actually, in most cases, the user can, can actually follow a much more simple process. So I was beginning by selecting a roof, which makes sense. We want to look at a roof and populate, um, populate its uh, various parameters. So I've selected a model element. Um, in this case, I have my footprint roof. And what I was doing then is I was actually just going straight to the geometry of the roof, which gives me um, essentially every solid face of the roof. So there are some things that we don't want to consider. For example, we don't want to look at the faces pointing down uh, because they're not technically the top of the roof. Uh, so what I was doing then is um, getting a, the center normal of each face and only isolating the ones that are pointing up. Um, so in this case, I was getting a point at parameter. I think I was getting actually a normal at parameter. And for each of these, which should be surfaces, if I explode this, so I have to break it up into its surfaces first. There we go, so I'm taking my surface. And at the U and the V value of 0.5, I'm essentially checking what the normal is. Um, now in this case, what I'm gonna be assessing is the Z component of the normal. 
um, essentially how vertical is the direction of the face and below a certain threshold, um, let's say uh, like 0.1, I'm going to exclude those faces. So in this case, I'm going to just get the, um, the Z components. So there should be a, a vector Z component, I believe. If I look up dot Z, there it is. And now I can just isolate that component. Now, if it's negative, it's pointing down. If it's positive, it's pointing up, essentially. And anything between then is essentially a range between negative one and negative zero. Um, so in this case, I can just say, is Z greater than 0 0.1? And if it is, I know this face is pointing at least a little bit up. Um, so in this case, I'll have a list of trues and falses, which I can then filter using a filter by Boolean mask. So, um, so far, so good. Um, I'm going to go back and filter the surfaces. That's one of my cuts. Um, now, at this point, I can just probably turn off the preview for some of these things. Now, I've just got the preview for these. And what I might do is just isolate what I'm left with. So the in list is going to be things that do meet the rules that I'm looking at. So we can see in this case, I have actually successfully isolated all the upward pointing faces. But the next challenge I sort of hit at this point is, well, how do I identify what each edge is? Um, and one of the biggest challenges was, well, how do I actually just filter out uh, the outside edges of the roof? Um, but then I took a step back and said, well, sometimes the outside edges of the roof are relevant. So I was like, oh, like, <laughs> what do I do? Um, how do I actually filter these? Um, one idea I did have is any edge with a gutter on it um, could be excluded. Um, but then I had to get the underlying sketch outline of the roof as well. At that point, I'm going into a custom package to do that. So there's a sketch, like a collect sketch node, I believe it is, from Spring Nodes. Um, in this case, element sketch, um, which I can use to compare to the edge of, of the roof itself. So if I go back to my initial roof and I get the curves, it gives me the outlines and I can clash these against all the edges to filter them out if there's a, a clash at the middle of that curve with the, um, the edges of the roof itself. The next challenge I face is if I got the edges of all the other edges of the roof, um, I'm going to get a double up. Um, most faces are going to have at least one edge and they're not always going to be facing the same direction. So I can't just say unique items and filter out the double ups. Um, in this case, what I actually did is I got the, the point at the start and the end, converted them to text and put them together, um, sorted them alphabetically first um, so that the X would come first if it was lower and then did a unique items by grouping by key and taking the first item from each list. So if you don't understand that process, don't worry. The point is that it was getting really complicated. Um, and, and I guess I just thought this, this, this isn't gonna work, like this is just gonna confuse them. Um, so it's good to think about uh, how people are gonna use your script sometimes. I'm getting really interested in this when I build my own Dynamo scripts. Um, I use a lot of user interfaces and messages that pop up to guide people through it using Dynamo Player. Um, and I thought, hey, what if um, what if the user just tells the script which edges are ridges, which ones are valleys, which ones are, are cappings? Um, it's so so dumb it's smart, right? Um, sort of the, the topic I'm covering today. So in this case, you can actually select edges. Oh, cat just ran across my keyboard. So I can just get someone to select multiple edges instead for me. Now, I don't believe that's a custom node, it's not. So in this case, um, I can just say, this is my roof. I'll make it an input by right-clicking it. Um, select roof. And in this case, I can just start saying, select the edges. So in this case, let's say we're just picking, say, all the, all the valleys. So I can just pick one edge. Done. I've picked my valley, and now I just have the curve immediately. Obviously, there's more user input required, um, but that's not really a bad thing sometimes. It makes the user think about what they're doing. It avoids things like mistakes happening. So if the script has an error in it or hasn't allowed for an exception, you don't have to worry about it because the user knows what they're doing now. So I can make this an input and say this is uh, select valleys. Good to also sort of name your inputs in ways that people understand what they're trying to do. Um, in this one, I can say uh, select uh, ridges. And finally, I can say uh, select select cappings. Sorry, it's just my cat making a bit of noise in the background. I'm not sure if that's going to come through on the recording. So whilst it looks like there's a lot of inputs and it's going to be slower to run, um, if you think about it, it's going to make more sense for people running it, I think. Um, so it was an interesting outcome, I think. So what I'll do is I'll just select a couple of ridges. So make sure, obviously, I have to make sure I'm selecting multiples so that they can pick more than one but I'll just pick a few in each case. Um, so all I had to do then is just essentially get the, um, the length of the curves. 
So in this case, the arc length for each list. And the script is just obviously super simple now. Some of them will have more than one curve, so you might want to do a sum on the values coming out of each one. But um, obviously, you know, like a very, very simple script now to run. Um, I have the, the lengths, and from there I'm just setting, setting the parameter. So I just wanted to share this just to show that sometimes Dynamo scripts don't have to be that complicated. Um, if you take a step back and think about what you're actually trying to achieve, and who's going to be running the script itself, I'll show you it running in Dynamo Player by the end as well. So I'll make this manual. And in this case, we have our three parameters. I'm going to put them in a code block. So first I'll do valleys. I think the next one was riches. And the last one was cappings. And these are the names of our parameters that we're setting. Um, so in this case, from our original roof, um, we could um, actually just put these into a list and set them three at a time, which is probably probably more direct. So now we have them together in a list, then we have the three names, and I'll just put them in a list as well by replacing the columns with commas and just putting square brackets around them. Now this is a list in itself. And finally we just say parameter names, parameter values, run. And in this case, we should just set the three parameter values. So now if I just save and run this script instead, I mean, again, it's a super simple script, um, but I just realized this, this just makes so much more sense for a user when they run it. In this case, you could also add the optional input to tell the, the, the script what the parameter names are in case you're working on projects with different parameter values. Um, but ideally, they're going to be the same on each job you work on. Um, so at this point, really, they're just going to be going into a user interface in Dynamo Player. Um, I can say this is my roof. I can say these are these are my cappings. And I love that it still highlights them as you go, so you know what you're working with. Um, in this case, my ridges. So I can sort of visually make out what I'm picking. I pick my cappings actually, so whoops, uh, I'll just do that again. And finally, my valleys, in this case just one. Run my script, check my check my values and Voila! Um, how easy is that? So, um, one last thing I like to do with scripts sometimes, um, if I'm, especially when I'm building them for clients, is to build in messages to the script, um, just to tell the user the script is done, because often the user will not even know what's happened. Um, so I have a little custom node in my crumple package, under, um, I think it's under application UI, called UI Messenger. And all it does is it can pass something through, but it just has a title, and a message. Um, so in this case, it's going to wait until something hits the pass, and it will pass it through if the user hits OK. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to create a code block and just say uh, result. And I'll just say in this case, uh, values have been, or I'll just say script is finished. Um, but I often will use things like if nodes to create different messages, um, especially if, some, if there's a warning in the data, so if there's a null maybe. I'll actually collect the data and see if there's any nulls and maybe I'll have a message saying script ran into errors, um, make sure you used it properly or some, something like that. Um, but I'll just say script has completed. I'll say result and body. So body being the text. And now when I run it instead, um, I'll get a friendly little message um, instead to sort of guide the user uh, through what's just happened because sometimes the user just doesn't know what's happened, right? <laughs> So select roof, um, you know, same thing again. So obviously it's like, it's not the fastest process to run, but it makes the user think as they go, um, which is quite valuable. So never underestimate the power of just a simple, simple script, I guess is what I'm trying to, trying to reinforce. So I run this and there's my message. Um, much more user friendly, much more easy. Um, and just a good example that even, even Dynamo experts like myself do actually make mistakes sometimes and overcomplicate what they build. Um, so hopefully this was a nice little tutorial and maybe, maybe this might help someone out there as an actual script. Um, but there we go. So there we go. I hope that was a insightful tutorial that not really just shared a technique in Dynamo with you, um, but also reinforced just the important concept of thinking about people uh, when you build scripts or just any, any technical solution really. Um, just because it makes sense to us as a coder 
uh, doesn't mean it's going to make sense or be fun to use as a user. Remember, they're not necessarily going to be as excited about Dynamo as we are. Um, and as well as that, at the same time, um, it's sort of our job to make Dynamo easier and more approachable for them to use. Anyway, um, I'd better go off and feed this guy. He's a bit hungry now. Um, but otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Take care. Bye.